Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp. This is still week two, video number eight. Um, I did not think we were going to be doing eight videos in one week. Um, so please be patient with me as I figure this out. Perhaps next week I will try and group some of these videos together. So we are not doing eight videos a week. Uh, this has taken me an inordinate amount of time. Uh, I'm going to try and be a little more efficient in the upcoming week. Um, the good news though, despite having eight videos this week, is that in this video, we are not going to cover any new content. So all of the content for this week has already been covered in the seven videos before this, right? So hopefully you've already watched all of that. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the homework, just like last week. Uh, I'm going to talk about it and then we will discuss the homework and look at the solution for it on Friday. But on top of that, we're going to start doing a new activity every week. I'm going to call this the exercise and I'm going to do one video every week where I show you the exercise and actually solve it right here on this video. The goal of having the exercise is a way for me to expose you guys to challenging problems. My homework will get more challenging as we go, but uh, the, the purpose of the exercise is to challenge you in different ways using concepts that may not all have been covered earlier. So I'm going to present this exercise to you guys right now one thing I would strongly encourage you to do is after I present what the exercise is, go ahead, pause the video, try to solve it on your own, and then come back and see the solution. Right? I think if you challenge yourself, you might learn a little faster than if you just go ahead and watch the video um, and just watch me do the programming. Right? That's not a great way to learn SAS. Uh, but let me go ahead and get started. I want to share my screen. Okay, uh, so hopefully you can see this, these are my week two video, week two uh, notes for the SAS bootcamp. I am going to scroll down to the class exercise. Uh, if you do not have access to this file, this is your chance to uh, hit pause on the video, take a screenshot, uh, print screen, uh, whatever you need uh, in order to have a copy of this exercise. And then there is also the homework that I'm gonna scroll down to. Uh, that you can skip pause the video, take a screenshot if you need to. Let me try and zoom out a little, see if you can get all of it in one in one screenshot. There you go. This is this will be a little little small in terms of font, but hopefully if you pause and take a screenshot, you can zoom in to read it. Um, okay, so let me first begin with the class exercise. Actually, let me begin with the homework. I want to walk you through this week's homework first, and then we'll jump into the exercise and then the solution for the exercise also. So for this week's homework, which is right here, uh, you are going to be using a data set called week two underscore HW. This is a file, um, let me see if I can pull this up for you guys. This is a file that includes a, a, a theoretical survey information about patients that may or may not have ADHD. Uh, there are many variables in this file. The only ones you will be concerned with are the female variable, which is zero is male, one is female the age variable, which gives you the age in years, and then the ADHD variable, which tells you whether individuals have ADHD or not. Now you're going to use all three of these variables and you're going to create a new data set from the one I'm providing you, right? This new data set is a subset of the original data set and it must only contain the rows that meet the following criteria. And the criteria are that adults have to be between the age of 18 and 21 years. If the row that you're looking at is not an adult, which means between the age of 18 and 21, then you should delete that row and not add it to the final data set. Uh, next, you need to create in your data set a flag variable. Uh, you can call the flag variable anything you want. I would probably just call it flag, but you have the freedom to call it anything you want. Make sure that the flag variable has a one to identify females with ADHD and it has a zero when the row is not a female with ADHD. Um, the next step is to use, uh, is to make sure you delete columns in the data set. The only columns in the final data set should be age, female, ADHD, and that, and that new flag variable that you created in step four. That's it. Only four columns in that data set. And then please save that data set to a permanent library. Um, and that is all your homework. So your homework is going to be pretty simple this week and we can talk more about it on Friday. Let me switch gears quickly and talk about your class exercise. So your class exercise is going to use that Pokemon data set that we showed earlier today, but this is called a Pokemon expanded data set because I've added a few more uh, columns of data to this 
in order for us to practice all of the things that we discussed in week two. Let me go ahead and show you guys what that data set looks like. Um, again, this data, set should, this data set should be available to you guys through SAS Studio if you sign up for SAS Studio as we discussed earlier. Uh, this, has, this data set has 800 rows of Pokemon. Each row is one individual Pokemon. Uh, there is an ID variable, a name variable. There is a type one and type two. Some Pokemon, if, for those of you that are not familiar with Pokemon, uh, some Pokemon have multiple types. They are a combination of different types. Some Pokemon are just one type of Pokemon. Uh, so there may or may not be a type two variable populated, but the type one variable is always populated for everybody. Uh, then there are three basic attributes we are interested in. HP, which is health points, attack and defense. There's also special attack, special defense, speed of the Pokemon, what generation they belong to and whether it is a legendary Pokemon or not, which is a true or false variable. The two final variables that we are interested in is a variable which shows you what date that you caught the Pokemon and what date the Pokemon was born. So we can identify the age of the Pokemon and so on and so forth. So let me go through the exercises uh, requirements, right? The first thing the exercise needs you to do is use this Poke expanded data set and calculate the age of the Pokemon as of today, which is 22nd of June, 2020. Second, identify the age of the Pokemon as of the day it was caught, which is, uh, which is the date underscore caught variable. Uh, and you can save that in a variable called catch underscore age. And also identify the weekday that the Pokemon was caught. And you can save that information in a variable called catch underscore weekday. Um, next bullet point, each Pokemon has three base attributes, the health points, attack and defense. You need to identify which of these three attributes is the strongest and then present the information, which is the name of that attribute in a new variable called strongest underscore ATTR. So strongest underscore ATTR should be equal to HP if the health points is the strongest attribute for a Pokemon. Uh, strongest under, underscore ATTR should be equal to defense if the Pokemon's strongest attribute is defense. And then uh, once right after you do that, create a new variable called strongest attribute value that displays the value of that strongest attribute. So let's say the strongest attribute of a Pokemon is attack which is 98, right? Uh, and the other HP and defense are less than 98. Then the strongest underscore ATTR will have the value attack in it. And the strongest underscore ATTR value will have the value 98, right? So that's what you need to show. Next, create a new variable called type that describes the type of the Pokemon based on its two existing types. There are two type variables, whereas, uh, and, and some Pokemon have both columns populated, some Pokemon only have one column populated you need to find a way to put both of those variables together. And if both are populated, then you need to show the name, the type variable as type one and type two. So for example, grass and poison is, is what I would want to see for that first row of data. Um, let me see if I can show you. So for this first row of data, the type variable should say grass space ampersand space poison. Right? For this Pokemon, the type variable should say just fire because there is no type two for this Pokemon. So that's what this bullet point says. Uh, next, you need to create a subset of data, meaning you need to only save some rows out of this original data file. And this subset should only include fire Pokemon, fire type Pokemon that were either caught as adults, meaning they were over 10 years old and adult Pokemon is over 10 years old. If you're asking me how I came up with that number, just go with it, I made it up. <laughs> Don't ask too many questions on a fake data set, all right? Uh, they were either caught as, caught as adults or they have health points as their strongest attribute. As long as those conditions are met, those rows can be in the final data set. Every other row should be deleted. Finally, your last data set should uh, only display the following variables, ID, name, strongest attribute, strongest attribute value, and catch age. And then you save it to a permanent library. That concludes the exercise, though I do have one more thing here, which is I want you to look up five date formats in SAS. In my previous videos, I showed you two or three date formats. I want you to look up, just Google it, uh, look up five additional date formats in SAS. At least one of those five should show what quarter the date belongs to, right? Um, this is an exercise just so that you can become more familiar with some of the date formats in SAS. Having said all that, I'm gonna pause for a second now. If you've understood all of this, please pause, go try to do this exercise on your own without watching the rest of this video, right? And then uh, if you have any problems, you can always come back to the video uh, and see how it is done. But I want you to go try it on your own first. So I'm gonna pause for a second.
while I'm getting my files ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this programming. I have, um, this is the programming for the week two exercise. I've already shown what the objectives are. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to write two lib name statements. The first lib name statement is for the data sets that are in the course for the, in SAS Studio, which will give you access to the Poke underscore expanded file. The second one is my lib, which, uh, which uh, links to my new folder. Now you will have your own address for my lib as we discussed last week. Hopefully all of that is clear by now. I've already executed these two codes. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the next one. Uh, first thing I want to do, I want to create a new variable, a new data set uh, to do all of the things we need to accomplish in this exercise. Let's call my new data set um, Poke underscore new. Right? Um, and I'm working off of the old data set, which is Poke underscore ex uh, expanded, which is in the class library, as you can see right here. Right. Let's go ahead and write my run statement. Okay. The first thing I need to do is calculate age of the Pokemon as of today. So let me go ahead. If you all remember from, from our uh, discussion earlier in the week, the way to calculate age is to use the YRDIF function. That's one way to do it. There are other ways to do age. And actually you will see as we go along this exercise, that there are many ways to accomplish the things needed in this exercise. I am going to use one way to do it. You are welcome to do it any which way you want. As long as we get the same answer and there are no errors in the code, it's fine. You don't have to do things exactly how I'm doing it. I am just used to doing things this way. Okay, so I'm going to use the YRDIF function. When you use the YRDIF function, write the earlier date first, so date of birth first, and then today's date, which is 22nd June 2020 with a D at the end then the word actual. Now, I did not actually talk about this word, this option actual in my uh, earlier video where we talked about SAS date. When you are using the YRDIF function, using the word actual within quotes actually gets you a uh, age that is much closer to reality. So I would rather use this word or just subtract those two dates and divide by 365.25. Either one's okay. Uh, but if you are going to use the YRDIF function, please remember to use actual. All right, so we've got the age calculated. The next step is to calculate the age of the Pokemon as of the day it was caught or catch age. Now, one thing I like to do in order to avoid errors in SAS is each time I finish running something, writing something, I wanna run it and I wanna just look to make sure it ran well, okay? So I'm, I hit execute on that, log looks okay. My output data set shows an age variable. So let's see if that is correct. So 2004 to 2020 is about 16 years. That looks right. 2007 to 2020, 13 years. 1999 to 2020, 20.5. Okay. So the age variable worked fine. The next thing we need to do is calculate age of the Pokemon as of the day it was caught. Now you can write a new data set. So I can, I can do this. I can say, okay, new two. And I can set okay underscore new and run. So what I would be doing if I did this was I would, I would be taking this data set that is created out of this uh, data step and then use it as my input for my next data step to create an, another new data set. And in here, I can write the code for calculating the age of the Pokemon on the day it was caught. So let me go ahead and do that. But let me go ahead and do that first and then we can talk about what else we can do. Um, age on the date Pokemon was caught. Uh, the exercise says I should call, call this variable catch underscore age. So I'm going to do that. The function should be exactly the same as the last one, except that instead of, um, instead of using age as of today, I want age as of date cut, which is date underscore cut in this data set. And then I'm going to follow it up with actual. And that's it, right? Now, if I run this, There you go, catch age, which is date of the birth minus date it was caught. So 2017 minus 2004 is 13, right? That looks good. 
2016 minus 1975, I assume is 41. 2017 minus 2007, 10.7. It looks right. I think it worked. Now, one thing I will say though is while this is oh, acceptable, I like to keep my code more um, compact. So I will first write it this way. But once I know that a given piece of code works, I'll just cut this and I'll paste it right here. And then I don't need this additional data set. So I don't need to create a new data set every single time I write one piece of code, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it within the same data set and it should give me the same answer and it does not affect how I do this exercise whatsoever, right? Uh, next step that the exercise demands is we identify the week day that the Pokemon was cut. Uh, week day Pokemon was cut. If you all remember from our homework, the way to uh, calculate week day is using the week day function. I'm just going to feed the variable date cut into that week day function, and that should give me what I need. I'm going to because I wrote a new line of code. I'm going to run it. Make sure it looks okay. Okay, there you go. Weekday is a number from one through seven, right? Where one is Sunday, seven is a Saturday, and it goes incrementally in between those two. It looks like it ran well. There is, uh, unless I pull up a calendar, I cannot really confirm that um, 30th September, 2017 was a Saturday, but I'm gonna trust that SAS knows what it's doing. Okay, the next thing, let me go ahead and save this while I'm here. I'm used to hitting control save. So this is another good habit. Every time you're programming, go ahead and hit control save as often as you can. It really could not hurt to do that as many times as possible. Just in case you lose code, you don't wanna regret it. And this is important if you're working on huge projects uh, where, where this kind of stuff makes a big difference. All right, next thing we are going to do is the next bullet point. Each Pokemon has three base attributes. Identify which of these attributes are the strongest. So we need to know for each data set, for each Pokemon, if HP is the strongest attribute or attack is the strongest attribute or defense is the strongest attribute. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, all of them involve simple Boolean logic. So which one you use is entirely up to you. Just after you write your code, go back to the data set and make sure that it has worked correctly, right? That's all I will ask of you. Uh, this is the piece of code that I would rather do in this case, okay? It's simple and I think it's easy to understand. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and stick to this code. So what this is saying is if defense is greater than or equal to health points and defense is greater than or equal to attack. And I have to say greater than or equal to because even if it is equal, I, I wanna be able to use it. If it is greater than for sure, that's better. But what if there is some scenario where all three attributes are equal? So we wanna be able to assign at least one attribute in those cases, right? So here, what we're going to do is we're gonna say if defense is greater than or equal to health points and defense is greater than or equal to attack, that means defense is the strongest attribute then I'm gonna say strongest ADTR equals defense. Uh, I'm gonna repeat the same piece of code with health points. So if health points is greater than or equal to defense and health points greater than, than strongest attribute equals HP. And then I'm gonna do this one more time where I'm gonna say if attack is greater than or equal to HP and attack is greater than or equal to defense then the strongest attribute is defense. Uh, now, wait, let me change this. So if attack is greater than HP and if attack is greater than or equal to defense, then the strongest attribute is attack. If it is defense, then you write defense. If it is HP, you write HP. Now this might seem like a simple enough code, but you will realize very quickly that this will throw an error. Let's look at it. So, so far I've got my age variable, catch age variable, catch weekday, all of those look good. There's my strongest ADTR variable and you will see there are problems with it, right? Attack only shows up as AT, defense only shows up as DE, HP show, health point shows up as HP. Why is this happening? Well, this is not something I covered during the week. So if you don't know the answer to this, that's okay. 
this is happening because when SAS creates a new variable, it automatically assumes a certain length for that variable. And the assumption it makes is based off of the best information it has at the time the variable is created. So the first line of code as SAS is executing this data step is this line where it creates the variable strongest underscore ATTR. And when that variable is created, strongest underscore ATTR, SAS thinks that the longest length of variable, longest length of the string in that variable is HP, which is two characters, right? Just two characters. So SAS sets that strongest attribute variable to have just a space of two characters, which means it then cuts off attack at two characters and defense at two characters, right? So you need to tell SAS, hey, don't, don't cut it off at two characters. I want you to leave adequate space for me so that these things don't get cut off after two characters. There are a couple of different ways to do this. You can use what is called the length statement or a format statement to help fix that problem. But I will show you a shortcut in this code, which basically tricks SAS without, without a problem. The way to do that is to basically take the longest, val val longest uh, value for str strongest ATTR and put that in the first row, right? So now when SAS is executing this data step line after line, the first time it comes across the strongest underscore ATTR variable, it is assigning it to a value called defense, which is D E F E N S E, which is seven characters in length. And seven is more than HP, which is two and attack, which is six characters, right? So SAS will, uh, SAS will assume that um, strongest underscore ATTR must have a length of seven characters, which means it will not cut off any of my other variables, right? So I could have used a length statement and I'm not showing it to you guys right now because you can go look that up on your own. It's very simple. Um, but I can basically trick SAS into not cutting off variables just by writing my first line to be my longest value of that particular variable, right? I hope that made sense. If not, please tweet at me. As you know, hashtag SAS bootcamp and my Twitter is Dr. Sujit Ram and I can help explain it or I can talk about it during my Friday's lecture. Uh, so that worked. Uh, Actually, before I confirm that it worked, let me check that. So in, for the first Pokemon, it tells me that the strongest attribute is attack. Let me make sure that is correct. I don't want to be making any assumptions here. Always double check. So 45, 49, 49, attack and defense were equal. HP was less. So I would have accepted either attack or defense as the right answer here, and it chose attack. I'm okay with that. Let's go pull up a random variable, right? Random row, excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna pick this row here. In this row, HP is 80, attack is 100, defense is 70. And my strongest attribute variable says attack, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna check one more variable to be absolutely certain this worked. Let's use this one. Uh, HP 25, attack 35, defense 70. So strongest attribute must be equal to defense in this row. And there you go, you have it. Right, so this worked, that's good. Now, what we need to do next is we need to say, okay, if the strongest attribute is defense, then the variable strongest attribute underscore value should be equal to the value of the defense variable. How do you do this? Well, there are a few different ways to do this. You can write a bunch of if then statements. You can write three if then statements to make it work. But I wanna use a select when statement just because we I showed you guys select when earlier in, in this week's videos and I wanna be able to use it. So in a select when statement, you write select, the name of the variable. You have to always end with the end statement. So I'm gonna write that first. When value HP strongest underscore ATTR underscore value equals HP, right? I take that back. So we want the strongest attribute value to be equal to the variable HP, not the value HP, right? So when strongest attribute, this variable equals HP, we want to set this new variable, strongest underscore attribute underscore value to be equal to the value under health points variable, correct? Okay. When it is equal to attack, then I don't wanna type this whole thing, I'm gonna copy paste it, equals attack. When it equals defense, equals defense, 
otherwise just set it to missing the way to set a numeric value because in this case we are dealing with a numeric value right hp attack and defense are all numbers so strongest attribute value is also going to be a number uh, these numbers will be equal to this one but to set a to set a missing value for a numeric variable you just have to type a period remember for a um, character variable the way to denote a missing value is two quotes single quotes or double quotes with nothing in between not even a space in between right for a numeric value it's one simple period now in our case there should not be any rows where the otherwise condition is met because for every single pokemon the strongest attribute should be either hp or attack or defense there should not be an otherwise case but i'm going to write it in any way because the select when syntax demands an otherwise statement so i'm going to write that otherwise statement and i'm going to make sure there are no missing values in this variable Let me run it. Log looks okay. That's my strongest attribute value. Now you remember that in this row, attack was equal to forty nine. Yep. Yeah. So it pulled the right variable in this column for me. Let me make sure there are no missing values. I'm just going to scroll really quick. Okay, I'm scrolling and I see no missing values. So that worked perfectly. Great. Um. Add a comment. All right. Next, I want to do set my type variable. Okay. Now my type variable has to be concatenation of type one and type two. So I can write type equals type one. Double pipes type two. Actually, I think it's type underscore one, type underscore two. Okay, I can write this. The problem with doing it this way, though, is what we've seen earlier. Why don't we go ahead and run it? We can look at the data set and see if it looks okay. Okay, so it did work, but it has given me grass points. This is not what I wanted. The exercise said it should say grass space ampersand space poison. Right, that's not what this says right here. So I would like to fix that because look under grass poison there are no spaces, but under fire flying there are spaces. So we've got some trailing and leading spaces in some cases as well, and I don't like that either. We want to make it consistent and we want to make it presentable. Okay. So the way to remove trailing and leading spaces is to use the strip character, strip operator. So I'm going to use the strip operator here. And I want to add space ampersand space, so I can just do that by doing that, right? So it's going to strip type one, and then concatenate it with three characters: a space, an ampersand, and a space. And then on that, on the right-hand side, it's going to concatenate that with a stripped version of type two. Let me see what this looks like. I usually like taking my code step by step like this, especially as you're starting. Begin your code step by step. Even if you think you know everything you need to do, do the first basic type function, check your answer, come back and do it again. Uh, here you can see grass and poison looks good. Fire and flying looks good again. Bug and flying looks good, but these types of, but but for some of these where there's only one type variable, I don't like having the fire and space like that that shouldn't be the case it should say just fire it should not say that so why don't we use some conditional logic to fix that i want to say if type underscore two is equal to missing which missing for a character variable is just two quotes then i want my type variable to be just equal to strip type underscore one remember every pokemon will have a type underscore one right Every Pokemon will have that. So if type two is missing, just set the type variable to be equal to type underscore one. And if it is not missing, and you can do this a couple different ways. So I can say if type underscore two is not missing, that's how you write a not missing sign. Then you can do that, right? So when type is missing, just set type to be equal to type underscore one. When type two is not missing, 
excuse me, when type two is not missing, then use this uh, concatenation string that we created earlier. So let's see if this works. And then I'll show you guys an alternate way to do this as well. It looks like it is working, but I have some, ah, oh, these variables are getting cut off. Uh, this goes back to what I said earlier, take your longest occurring variable and put that up front. Now let's see if this will do a better job. This should not have any cut up. Uh, this should not be cutting the variables off. There you go. So hopefully you understand the value of the order of summaries creating the new variables, right? Because in this case, when I put grass and poison as one of my first one, uh, SAS assumed that the variable type had a certain length, which and in that length, you get to cover every single um, type of the type variable that we want. So you've got grass and poison here, fire here, and so on and so forth. Now, if I did not want to do it this way, one other thing I could do is instead of writing an if then statement here, I could just write an else statement. I know we did not cover if then else statements during our video, but this is a simple introduction to it. The if then else basically says, if condition, then do this. And then the else says, if that previous condition was not met, then just do this. Now we previously, we had typed it out explicitly by saying, if type two is missing, then do it. But I don't have to be explicit. I can just say else, right? Now I prefer being explicit as much as possible, but this should also work as, this should also work without any problems. Let's run and check it. Oh, excuse me, the else statement does not have a then. There you go, that should work. I've got that in the log there. Okay, it worked. So the else works just as well as the if then. I just prefer using the if then because it's more explicit and I, I always hate having assumed uh, conditions within my SAS code because it makes it harder to read. But that completes my next bullet point in my um, in my exercise. I think I'm running late for a meeting, so I'm gonna text somebody really quick. All right. Um, let's see, so the next thing we need to do, and I'm doing all of this in one data step. So hopefully you can see by now that you can have a data step that is as long as you want, and it does not change anything about how the data step works. In fact, I think it makes it more compact instead of having 25 different data steps, right? You could write 25 different data steps, and that would also work like I showed at the first example, uh, but I prefer having them all within one data step. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a subset of the data that only includes fire type Pokemon that were either caught as adults over 10 years of age or their strongest attribute had to be HP. So how do you write that? Here you have to delete rows, which means you can use an if condition with, with a delete option or you can use an if condition um, or you can use an if condition and assume the delete, right? And here we want to do the second option and you will see why. So let's go back and read the condition again. It says if data set should only include fire type Pokemon, so type should be equals fire, right? And that were either caught as adults or have HP as a strongest attribute. So here I'm gonna use parentheses and I'm going to say, uh, age is greater than or equal to 10. They were caught as adults, so catch underscore age, excuse me. So catch underscore age has to be greater than or equal to 10, or their strongest attribute has to be equal to HP. I'm gonna put parentheses here to make sure it is clear how my Boolean logic works. So what this is saying is that this condition has to be met, type equals fire, and 
one of these two conditions have to be met. Either catch underscore age has to be greater than 10 or the strongest attribute has to be equal to HP. Uh, when using Boolean logic with multiple statements like this, the and and the or, I always prefer using uh, parentheses and the parentheses make them so much better. In fact, not only can you use parentheses, you can strategically format your code to make it easier to interpret. See what I did here? So I included my and statement in the middle and my condition above and condition below. So now I can clearly see that above condition has to be met and below condition has to be met. And the below and the bottom condition is either type condition one or condition two. And when these conditions are met, I don't, I could write a then delete here, but remember, I don't want a then delete. I want to actually keep or hold on to these rows. And I can do this a couple of ways. I can just leave it like that, which means it is assuming, I'm assuming that all other rows are getting deleted except the ones that meet these criteria, or I can write a then output statement, and that will give me the same answer, right? Uh, now this looks okay. The only difference here is that I'm assuming that fire is always spelled in my data set with a capital F, and I do not want to make that assumption. I would rather use the low case operator because this is just good coding practice and do that, right? So in case there is something in your data set where all the letters of the fire are in capital letters, or maybe F and I are in uppercase and everything else is in lowercase or some other combination like that, this low case operator will take care of that. Um, so that should delete the rows I want. Next, I need to delete some columns. Um, and the exercise tells me that the only columns that I need to show are ID, name, type, strongest attribute, strongest attribute value, and catch age. So because there's only five of them, I want to use a keep option instead of a drop option. I want to keep ID, name, type, strongest underscore ATTR, and then strongest ATTR value, and then catch underscore age. So now I'm going to go ahead and run it. See if it gives me what I want. If you remember correctly, because we are deleting the rows here, it should decrease the number of rows in our data set. So let me see that in the log. So we went from 800 observations in 4K underscore expanded to just 28 observations in 4K underscore new. And you can pull up output data here and see it has exactly the variables we want, right? ID, name, catch age, strongest attribute, strongest attribute value, and type. And you'll see here every single Pokemon in the final data set is a fire type Pokemon, which was one of the criteria we wanted. The second criteria we wanted, if you remember, was either they had to be caught as adults, right? Or their strongest attribute had to be HP. So you'll see here that all of these Pokemon were caught as adults over the age of 10 years in Pokemon adult age. This one uh, was an adult, but it also had a strongest attribute of HP, right? So this met both those criteria. We did not happen to have any Pokemon that had a strongest attribute HP that were not caught as adults. But if that were a case, they would be included in my code. Uh, so this concludes the exercise for week two. I hope that was clear. Uh, I apologize if I rush through at the end there. I'm running about 10 minutes late for my next meeting. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Please try your hand at the homework as well. Um, and I will see you guys Friday. If you have any questions, please tweet at me at hashtag SAS bootcamp. I got a lot of wonderful questions last week and I'm hoping I can get some good engagement this week as well so we can have an interesting class on Friday. I will see you all on Friday then. Bye.